I want to mention two groups of initials. One is UCI, and this was a, a talk that uh, Bill Britt uh, and one of his associates had arranged. Uh, initially, uh, the anesthesiology department was interested. And there was so much interest that the whole school got interested, and there was so much interest that it was eventually shut down by one person. And I'd like to uh, ask uh, Don, uh, Don Labrum, if he would suggest what's wrong with the people at UCI, uh, since you've got uh, uh, PMLE down there. And the other initials I want to mention are AACM. Uh, Greg Carter did mention that he is the president of the American Academy of Cannabinoid Medicine, and we're coming out of the closet pretty quick here. And so I'd, I'd like to... Uh, uh, you know, the issue of teaching at universities, uh, medical schools has come up, and I know that, uh, that Bill Britt and other people are trying really hard to make this happen, and having barriers, what can be done about it, and then I would hope that Greg could say a word or two about the AAC now. Thank you. So the UCI question is that question that you just asked about barriers at medical school? That, yeah, I don't know anything about the UCI. Uh, particularly, uh, but I do know that there is a, a medical resident at UCLA who's been trying to invite me down there to talk to the medical staff about <coughs> medical cannabis, and <coughs> they don't want me to come. He's having trouble getting me invited. Oh, you're down there too, yeah. So, uh, uh, but I do know yesterday I was talking to uh, the head of our school of uh, nursing, uh, and she's a pain expert. <coughs> she asked me if I would uh, come this semester and teach about complementary therapies for pain, and I said, no, that's not really my topic. And she said, well, how about cannabis for pain? So I said, oh, okay, I'll do that. So, you know, I guess it depends on where you are. I really don't know the UCI issue, sorry. Um, well, that was Dr. David Pierman, who is a, a, a tremendous uh, physician and has been very active in the AACM. Uh, David, actually, I would have mentioned that. I, we, as uh, I think Mitch or someone alluded to, we or actually we said Dr. Harper, we sort of started out with a 30 minute talk, but then it got little to a 20 minute, and then it was 10 minutes if you're lucky. So I, I did have a slide on the AACM later down. This was actually, to be honest, Neil Agarwal's idea. He came to a bunch of us at Hempfest a few years back and said, why don't people that are clinically active in cannabinoid medicine form an academy? And we all thought it was a brilliant idea at the time. Uh, and since that time, we have stumbled along trying to get bylaws and regulations and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Dr. Beerman has been tremendous, tremendously instrumental in that. Uh, we're almost up and running. Uh, we're going to talk to Dr. Abrams about being our scientific advisor. Uh, yeah. All right. We are <laughs> trying to legitimize cannabinoid medicine. Uh, at least in the state of Washington, I still see quite a bit of referrals from <laughs> private practice physicians who actually acknowledge and acknowledge in their progress notes that the patient would benefit from, from medical uh, marijuana, but they don't have the proper licensing. There's a tremendous uh, uh, lack of knowledge in the medical community uh, on you know what it takes to recommend marijuana actually uh, beyond a little bit of guts. It doesn't take much more than that, and it's a knowledge. It's a very safe medicine, uh, but physici physicians are still afraid of it. You do hear the horror stories, Molly Fry, uh, you know, DEA kicking your door down, taking your license away. Uh, so you're sort of stuck in this, in this ozone layer of paranoia uh, about losing your license or having your ability to practice medicine taken away. Um, I'm going to fly back to the AMA meeting in a couple of weeks here uh, and hopefully get the proposition that Sunil put through to the medical student coalition from AMA, have that actually officially adopted by the AMA. Um, Donald will tell you that the American College of Physicians, which is internal medicine folks like him, and, and those guys wear their ties so tight they practically choke. I mean, this is a very conservative group of physicians, and they have come on board with this. I think that was huge, almost more huge than the AMA. But if the AMA comes out with a position statement and adopts Neil's proposition, 
then we're going to be well on our way. And with Dr. Bierman's help and Frank Lucido and Jeff Herengrafter and others, you know, we hopefully will get this American Academy of Cannabinoid Medicine established. We're trying to develop a, an examination that physicians would take to show that they have some operating knowledge of how cannabis works, actually have board certification, and bring it up to the level, level of legitimacy that actually William O'Shaughnessy, uh, actually, Dr., again, Dr. Abrams sent me a bunch of historical stuff. You know, this is, this is old stuff that we're reinventing. If you read, if you go back, and I suggest you all do this, go back and look at Dr. William O'Shaughnessy's writings from 200 years ago, and, and he just, he's talking about all the same stuff we're talking about here today. It was just buried in politics and paranoia. It's a shame, but we're trying to bring it back. We have uh, time for two more questions, and uh, Randy and Matthew. Um, but uh, because we're about to have a soft break, if you will, we're all going to be eating in here. They have a buffet that will be served in about five or ten minutes. Try to break so people can enjoy the sunshine and whatnot. But just uh, we'll wind down here to these two questions, but realizing that we'll break after that. Thank everybody. And then we're coming back in here to eat in around uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes after that. We'll hear from our keynote speaker, Mark Leno. Thank you so much.